Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin has denied the Radical Dems' request to see the president's tax returns. A statement from the Treasury Secretary reads in part, quote, the committee's request is unprecedented. It re represents serious constitutional questions and the resolution of which may have lasting consequences for all taxpayers. I have determined that the committee's request lacks a legitimate legislative purpose. The department is therefore not authorized to disclose the requested returns and return information. Desperate Dems on the House Judiciary Committee scheduling a vote for Wednesday. They're trying to hold Attorney General William Barr in contempt. Chairman Gerald Nadler still demanding an unredacted version of the Mueller report. This despite federal secrecy rules that prohibit the release of grand jury material, amongst other things. Joining us tonight is the vice chairman of the House Republican Conference, Congressman Mark Walker, also a member of the House Homeland Security Committee, uh, the Education Administration Committees, and the uh, Intelligence Committee. Good to have you here. Yeah, good to be here. Congress, let's start with, first of all... <laughs> Were you surprised by Treasury Secretary Mnuchin's response? No, I, I, I like what some of these cabinet secretaries are doing. In fact, it was just last week when uh, the Democrats thought they would tell uh, Attorney General Barr what he would do, and he just flat out said no. And then today Mnuchin, though a little bit more eloquent, said, no, this isn't happening. It is, it is a, a wondrous thing to behold, uh, as you suggest, when Barr said no. What would, what would you do with them, he said. Uh, and to see the Treasury Secretary say, no, uh, you're being preposterous, uh, politically uh, motivated, uh, annoyances and go away. I, I mean, sure. I love it. Well, you look at, look at the history there, even for Attorney General, with Loretta Lynch and Eric Holder, mm -hmm. people that obviously the administration was able to ploy and pawn whatever they needed to be able to take care of. So now you have some strong people in these positions who are saying, no, you're not going to use me as a legislative pawn in this game that you're playing. I think ultimately it's going to backfire, backfire on the majority of these Democrats. You know, even the, the situation with the Judiciary Committee and Gerald Nadler, mm -hmm. he's already overreached uh, yeah. without question. Uh, it's very clear the, the laws and regulations that the Attorney General is following uh, appropriately and legally so. Yeah. Uh, they're going to be, if they have to go to court, they're going to look like abject fools. You, you can't depend on the left-wing media to report faithfully that. Uh, you can't count on uh, you know the, the Democrats yeah. to, to stop themselves. But... The courts will. They, they will. And here's the thing, Lou. I've been in Congress now for about four and a half years. Some of the elder statesmen in the Democrat Party, they know what's going on here. Mm -hmm. But they are being hogtied by some of these new members drug further and further to the radical left that they have to play the game and jump through the hoops just to stay relevant. It's going to cost them ultimately. Uh, and there's an interesting turn, and that is on the part of the New York Times, mm -hmm. saying in its editorial today to give the president uh, the money that he's asking for for the Southern crisis, which the New York Times of all outlets acknowledges, uh, for at least the humanitarian uh, uh, cost of uh, that crisis. Yeah, well, well, at least they're moving gradually. I think it took Jay Johnson, the DHS secretary under Obama, to finally come out and call this, this is a humanitarian crisis. To his credit. So now they're starting to move a little bit, for, but for them to block the president or say we're not going to support the four and a half billion dollars when the whole reason that are arguing this is a humanitarian perspective it shows you the level of hypocrisy that is the democrat party today you know, they're not short on manifestations of hypocrisy are they <laughs> exactly I, let's turn to uh, to the crisis itself uh, what do you think of the uh, the acting uh, director of homeland security secretary of homeland security uh, uh, Kevin McAleenan. Well, I think he's coming out strong. Uh, being a ranking member on the Committee on Homeland Security, we worked directly uh, very much so with DHS, where it was Kirsten Nielsen, even Jay Johnson was there when I first arrived in Congress. This is somebody who needs to identify the issue and then to message well. Most of the American people had no idea of the trafficking that was going on, on the amount of drugs. Even as a member of Congress, we didn't really right. get all that data till late last year and earlier this year when the American people started finding out how big the crisis it is. They sided with the president, so we need to make sure we continue to talk about just the travesty that it's become. And to see the number of, of uh, Americans now uh, agreeing with President Trump that it is a crisis, it's moved 17 points 
from January to last it month. It has. For whatever reason, yeah. the Democrats aren't using that talking point anymore. Once you've educated the American people, whether it's this, whether it's the economy, whether it's other areas, they're going to say, wait a second, this President Trump's looking okay. And uh, let's turn very quickly as we run out of time here, Congressman, uh, to uh, to the uh, strike group, the aircraft carrier strike group that's headed uh, toward the Persian Gulf in response to a threat uh, from Iran. Uh, what can you tell us, your thoughts? Thank goodness the president showed strength a year ago to get us out of this horrible treaty that sent hundreds of billions of dollars that we now have evidence that was being funded to Hamas and Hezbollah and some of these other terrorist groups that all members of Congress should be calling out. I think it's another sign of strength that we're going to show to the Iran, to the Middle East, that we're leading on these issues.